When you're smiling. Hey, you. Bubbly sparkling water is crisp, refreshing, and perfect for any occasion. Kind of like my voice, but in a can. No calories, no sweeteners, all smiles. Bubbly. Crack a smile. Empire. Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Com Report wherever you get your podcast, and check us out on YouTube. Go to Empire Media, that's A-M-P-I-R-E, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It is always much appreciated. Today, I'm joined by Washington rookie safety, Percy Butler. A lot to talk about with him, his potential role in Washington's defense this year, the influence of his grandfather and his dad. Growing up in Plaquemine, Louisiana, where another former Washington player, Brian Mitchell, also grew up. They have a relationship now, and so we talk about that. Plus, I ask him about breeding dogs. Yes, he does that. A lot to talk about with Butler. I think he's a smart kid. I think you're going to enjoy the interview because you'll learn a thing or two about him, how he goes about his approach, the focus which that he has. And how he was a lot, the one common denominator with he and Brian Mitchell, and I remember asking Brian Mitchell this one time way back when about being a fifth round pick. And he said, a lot of times people get drafted and they think they've made it. He said, I think I just got started. That's why Mitchell lasts a long time. And I think that's, I think that's an approach that Butler will take as well. For now, he is working behind Derek Forrest as the third safety. Forrest has played throughout the spring, has looked breaking or breaking a lot better, playing a little bit faster. I think with Butler still learning some things and you can see that like there's, I wouldn't say hesitation, but I don't think he's moving as fast as he's going to when he starts to get it. Not that's natural. They're also using Benjamin St. Juice in that nickel role when he's inside playing the slot corner and gives him some size inside there. Um, so we'll see how it develops. But I think if nothing else, I think Butler will be a good gunner for them this year. And the guy who can certainly develop, whether it's, this year or early in the year, mid, late, or next year. I think he's going to be a guy that's going to be a, again, if nothing else, maybe a key backup for them. We'll see. But I think he has the tools to develop. And I think, again, I think you'll like what you hear. So stay tuned for that in about a minute or two. Before I get there, let's get to the fun stuff. Jack Del Rio, once again, since we talked last, he has been fined $100,000. Ron Rivera put out a statement. I'll get to that in a minute. And then on Saturday, Del Rio deleted his Twitter account. And I was talking to somebody today who knows Jack and who's worked for him, et cetera, and said, Jack's a guy who can't help himself, so it's a probably a smart thing for him to do. Because this is a franchise so worried about its brand right now. And as you know, the brand has taken a huge hit over the last couple of years. So their goal is to rebuild it, and they don't want to create the kind of headlines that they had last week and that they are still kind of getting because of all this. So I think for Jack, probably a good thing. I might, you know, I wouldn't be, wouldn't have been surprised if he goes out there and had done something again, that it leads to something a lot more than just a fine. And there you go. So anyways, that's it. And again, Ron Rivera put out a statement the other day, um, just kind of explaining why they wanted to find him and went into a lot of depth. And again, I, when I was talking to somebody, they, their takeaway was less about the fine and more about the statement and they wondered how that was going to play out with Rivera and Del Rio. We'll see. I think with Rivera wanted to make a certainly make his own statement on the situation so people know where they stand. And again, this is a franchise that is trying to rebuild its brand. So you can like or dislike it. I'm just telling you how it is. Now, you'll see you've seen some ex players come out and rip Del Rio for what he said. Ed Reed joined the, the chorus the other day. Um, I know D'Angelo Hall tweeted a clown emoji at him the other day. All I can tell you is I talked to seven different people who either represent players, are friends with them, whatever, but they're very tight with these guys. Not any, There hasn't been a single guy who has said, oh yeah, I think this is going to be an issue. And, and I think I told you the other day, talked to somebody close to Chase Young and the comment was, that's Chase's guy. He loves him. So you can like that, you can dislike it, whatever. I'm just telling you, that's what I've heard. If I hear differently, I will tell you, but I think part of it too is these players have a relationship with him that extends beyond a tweet or a comment. And I think he is somebody who genuinely says, if you want to come talk to me, that he would talk to them. 
I think they, I think they know that. Now, it doesn't mean that everybody's going to like him. It doesn't mean that everybody who's worked for him likes him. That's he's a, he can be. A, I've heard that he can be a difficult guy to work for. Okay, um, I talked to someone today who who is with somebody who coached with him and said that they they were fine with the experience, but they're glad that they're you know somewhere else right now. Not they weren't here in Washington. So, but the point is, like you know, he's going to be a guy who's who could rub people the wrong way, regardless. But I'm just telling you that right now, what I've heard from people close to the players is that this will not be an issue in the locker room. We'll see where this goes. There you go. All right, now let's get to on the field. Washington has their three-day mini camp coming up this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. A big question will be, does Terry McLaurin show up? Now, Ron Rivera said he expected him to show up. I don't know that that's going to happen. We'll see. He clearly is making a little bit of a statement by not being there. He's a team leader. They know he's going to be prepared whenever he comes in. It's, it is mandatory now. Why wouldn't he show up? Well, part of the, what the agent wants is to create, again, more leverage. And part of that leverage is getting fans to get upset. So if he doesn't show up, you guys aren't going to be happy about it. And what are you going to do? You got to sign him. You got to sign him. Well, they know that. And these guys in Washington knows they got to sign him. But I think that's so if he doesn't show up, it could be about that. Other people think that he will show up because that's the kind of guy he is. There has been communication with him. So I think they feel good, at least about that, understanding what he wants um, from a contract. And so I think, you know, if he does show up, I think it could be a situation where he does some things, but maybe doesn't participate in a lot of things, but that he is here since it is mandatory. And one thing we know about McLaurin is very much into being a team leader. Just he understands his importance to this team. So, but it's still something to watch because we don't know what's going to happen. I look forward to watching minicamp because I, again, I miss a couple of OTA practices. So it'd be nice to see guys over three consecutive days. I'm curious to see how Jamin Davis has been developing. You know, you hear some things that he's playing a little bit quicker. Be nice to see it over three days. Cole Turner, what's his it, what's his potential for this year? And I talked to Logan Paulson about it in my podcast on Friday. Go back and listen or watch that one because I thought Logan was really insightful on it, talking about the tight end group. But I want to see how cold is. Sam Cosme, how has he developed? Deami Brown, what you know, what kind of consistency is he showing in practice? So that's why I'm anxious or, or curious, what I'm most curious to see over these next three days. And by the way, I'm going to post probably about a 10 minute video after each of the OT, excuse me, after each of the mini camp practices, just to give you an update every day about what's happened, what I saw, things that went on. Um, you know, there you go. And I'll probably, we'll probably hear from players on Tuesday about what Del Rio, he's supposed to get up in front of the team in, in a meeting and, and address the situation. So what do they say? It might, you know, we'll see. So just so you know, I have it every day. So check it out. And there you go. With that, it's time for Percy Butler. So let's get to my conversation with the Washington Commanders fourth round pick. This episode is brought to you by State Farm. There are some monthly expenses you just can't get away from, like insurance. You might be looking at your expenses thinking you're going to have to pause on your DIY project, stop collecting vinyl, or even give up your daily coffee fix to have great insurance. Talk about a nightmare. It's a good thing State Farm knows everyone has a budget and they have a range of options, like insuring your ride and your home with surprisingly great rates on both. With State Farm, you can also personalize your policy so you get the coverage you need at a price that lets you keep up with your projects, add to your vinyl collection, and continue to enjoy your coffee habits. So forget about giving up what you love to have great insurance. For surprisingly great rates, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or go to statefarm.com for a quote today. This episode is brought to you by Cheetos Deja Tu Huella. Deja Tu Huella means leave your mark, and that's exactly what Latinos are doing all across the country. They're rewriting the rules and pushing the boundaries in their communities to leave their own unique mark. They use their gift, their superpoder, to make an impact, whether it's through art, music, fashion, food, or something else. And Cheetos will celebrate what they're doing by shining a light on their transformative power. The Deja Tu Huella program celebrates those leaving their mark in Latino communities. You can also celebrate by checking out the new podcast, Batman Unburied, on Spotify. Batman Unburied is presented by Cheetos Deja Tu Huella. Visit Batman Unburied on Spotify to learn more. Percy, 
I, when I asked Billy Napier about where, like, I asked him a couple weeks ago in um, the question, he said, where do you think Percy gets his toughness? And his response was, have you ever been to Plaque Mine, Louisiana? And I hadn't, but I know Brian Mitchell. I know how tough he is. So that told me a lot. But what is what does that mean to you when when you hear him say that? Like, what is being from Plaque Mine? How does that give you your toughness? Uh, basically, that just means like I'm a product of my environment, for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, just growing up, I ain't going to say we had it the roughest, but it wasn't always the, well, my family, it wasn't always the, the best, you know? We always wanted a better situation than what we was in. So I feel like that just made me go harder, you know, just want to be at the top and have better situations for me and the people who I love. And, and so like, wh where, do you, how did you see that, you know, as far as, um, was it, does it play out on the field that way? Do you feel that when you're on the field that you just kind of come with a different toughness because of that? Yeah, I, I, I'll say that, but what really made me come like that, like when I really started like liking football was my senior year when I had quit playing baseball. And like, I really was mad that I couldn't play baseball. So I just used that anger from, okay. from that and it brought it to the field. You know what I'm saying? I do. And I was going to ask you about baseball because I heard you were a pretty good player. Why'd you stop? Uh, So my team, well, my high school had hired a coach and me and the coach wouldn't really, you know, like I wasn't seeing eye to eye with the things oh. that he wanted to do for me rather than what the old coach had plans for me. So like, that just took me away from the game for real. And that was, but that was your first, that was a sport you, that was your first love, right? Oh yeah, that was a sport like while everybody else doing seven on seven and all that, I'm playing travel baseball. So like that was the sport like I used to do through the summer. So like I just was playing football at first. I wasn't really, you know, like trying to play football, but I was just being on the team, you know what I'm saying? And what kind of a bit, like what, what, what position you play in baseball? I'm assuming a lot of stolen bases too. Oh yeah, I just I just I stole third, second. Well, I stole second probably every time I got on base, but I just stole third and got saved too, beating out ground balls to second base, stuff like that. Listen, I'm right there with you. I'm I was a leadoff hitter, and stolen bases were my thing. And I just like as my cockiness, I used to go into second standing up just to let the catcher know he couldn't, he had no chance to get me. So I feel that. Yeah, I, I bet. So did you, so, but then you went to, so then you turned to football more, not turn to football, but you focus on that more. Are you surprised like where it took you or did you know like, Hey, I could make something in this too. Uh, I ain't going to say surprise because it was something that I always had my mind on. So like once I put, I'm a person, if I put my mind to something, I'm going to get it accomplished. So like a lot of people who was, who I was telling this to was surprised. But some people, you know, like they see me, like they see I'm serious. So they know like he gonna handle his business. I believe him. Like one of my balls in Plagman, he 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 posted, like I've been told y'all this. Like we been had this talk. So like, I mean, I wasn't surprised, but I mean, I'm grateful though. Sure. And what what changed it? What what put you on? Because again, you can have you have the toughness, you have speed and all that. What made you a better football player that put you from a guy who was maybe going to go play baseball to now doing this to now getting to the NFL? Uh, I'm going to say basically like people probably look at football like as in like you just got to be a freak athlete. But in reality, like football really like a game plan and sport. Like when you put – when you can use your brain and have the athletic ability, I mean like that just changed everything about you and it just make you a whole different player. So I felt like when I was able to use like my smartness – Cause I like I always been good in school. Like when I apply myself, so like when I really use my brain on the field, and I and it just started clicking. Like the whole game just slowed down. It was like everything was moving in slow motion for real. My understanding is what like when you go back to your room, you're studying your playbook, and you're having people quiz you on what's in that book. Is that kind of accurate right now? Is that what you've been doing a lot? Uh, right now, uh, I ain't gonna, I ain't been having people quiz me. I really been like a lot like to myself so like okay. basically like i'll have like uh we'll get a new install and like the plays that i think like with the hardest to me i'll rewrite them and i'll keep them in my brain for when i go to sleep and then like i even have a dream about it sometimes really 
I wake soon as first thing when I do when I wake up, I quiz myself, boom, I write down the place and I see how much of the stuff I can rewrite on the paper. Then I go um compare it to the real notes that I took in the in the um meeting. So then like it just it just stick with me after that. That that's impressive because I haven't heard many guys doing it like that. The other thing, your daughter stayed behind and they're they're behind in Louisiana, correct? Right now? Yeah. So when are and when are they going to join you? And that does that allow you to ba basically to concentrate on learning this playbook now? Uh they should be able to join me um probably September. Okay. So September, you're able to focus now on this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I ain't I probably you straight you up. Yep. Yeah. I'm I'm probably not gonna have them out here until like after camp, you know what I'm saying? When I have everything straight on my end and so I can have everything straight at the house that I'm getting for them too. Okay. And how, but how nice is it, even though you're, you're kind of back and forth to be a dad right now and to have all this going on? Uh, right now, I mean, it's like, I'm in the, in the middle, you know, like I'm, I'm happy about my situation, but at the same time, I really rather spend this time with my daughter, but I know like to, to like, for to get where I want to be, I'm going to have to, take this time it's gonna be some missed time you know just it's just another sacrifice like that i had to get to take that out to get where i'm at right now so i just look at it like that but i i miss my daughter every day i'm it sure is. i'm sure you do it's I'm sure you it's a lot of fun when they're first born um how do you feel like you have been learning stuff then and when you when you're going back and watching practice film and seeing what you're able to do how do you feel you've been progressing because of the work you're putting in oh uh, i'm gonna say like Basically, like some mistakes that I make, uh, I'm not making the same mistakes out there. So, like, boom, like when you coming from college to NFL team, like you're gonna be playing a whole different techniques. Right. So I'm just learning like new techniques, how coach want this job done, uh, what type of footwork I'm gonna have to use right here. And it, and I was using my college footwork on some of them, but that's not the same footwork that coach want me to do. So just like switch, like getting used to the different techniques and learning the plays. And there, there was a route combination that I saw when you guys were in rookie mini camp. that the first time you saw it, I could see there was like a little bit of confusion on your end. I think it was something down the seam, if I remember right. The next time you saw it, you broke right. Is that kind of like some of the stuff you're talking about, like just things getting used to and not making that same mistake twice? And do you remember what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, I remember what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, like things like that. So like, the team motion a lot. Like when, when you first get in the play and the team motion, like that's confusing. You know, you used to seeing it on paper where it's not moving. Right. So when, when stuff start moving, that's that's really what slow people down, you know, like so like it when it first time, like I know you're talking about they motion the man. So right. I, I was slow on what the what my check and adjustment was. But the next time I seen it, I'm already knowing, like, boom, call this. They finna run this same route, jump. So like just different things like that, you know, and that comes from watching film, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, it does. That Listen, Pete, when people talk about instincts, to me, instincts are when you are studying and you're and you combine your studies with your brains that that allows you to play with good instincts. And that seems to be what you did in college, too. Um, the other thing, too, like, how do you feel they're talking about using you at that Buffalo nickel, that third safety position? How do you feel that you? What do you think about that spot, and how do you feel you've been progressing there early on? Uh, I feel good about that spot. Um, loving the um, loving it for real. Like I'm loving like the scheme and everything. Like how how they want me to play. So like really, I'm just trying to learn learn all the plays, stack days on top of days, good days on top of good days, enough to where coach trust me to put me in, and hopefully I'll be running that Buffalo nickel this season. Yeah, and it's it's a big part. Have they let you know how big a part that is with this defense? Oh yeah, most definitely. They call it a lot. Like they'll be like, "Uh, just play high, play Buffalo, play high, play Buffalo." <laughs> two plays. It's like so. It's like I'm really learning basically like the whole secondary and self corner right now. So like it's a lot on my plate, but I'm taking. I feel like I'm taking the right steps to handle everything. Who who has helped you with that too? Uh, so. Uh, a lot of the veterans like um Bobby McCain, Cam Curl, uh Jeremy Reeves, 
Like a lot of the guys, like mostly everybody who in the safety room or in the secondary, I play like the regular nigga spot. Uh, they'll like if I mess up, they'll chop it up on how they feel like um it should go. Uh, tell me how do they play it so I can learn from them. So I'm really learning from everybody in the secondary. And then special teams, because I think I asked you this at the rookie mini camp, but you seem to really, really enjoy that gunner role just based on watching you play, because you don't make those kind of plays if you don't enjoy it. Why do you like playing the gunner position? Uh, I'm going to say because that's what first got me on the field in college, you know what I'm saying? Like special teams. When I went in there, like, we only had like three plays at Platinum. So, like, it was real hard for me to learn a big playbook. Oh, yeah. And especially, like, Coach Tony playbook. So, like, I had to take special teams to – be on the travel squad. Like if I didn't play special teams, I would have been at home without a team going out to different states and stuff like that. And I didn't want to miss that. So I took special teams like serious. And then like, I just always did it serious. Like from that year on. How much do you enjoy watching those? Like when you're watching highlights, do you get a bigger kick out of watching on special teams or defense? Uh, Does it matter? It don't really matter. I just <laughs> it hits a hit, I guess, but it but there's gotta be a special thing with special teams though, because not everybody wants to do it. Yeah, I say everybody don't want to do it, but like it's anything within the game of football, I love to do it. So like I mean, it's football at the end of the day. When when Sean Taylor was here, I remember he used to talk about how he wanted to be on kick coverage on special teams so he could set the tone on the opening kick. That's what he wanted to do. Does that is that something you like to do? Most definitely. It, it set the tone and get the butterflies out your gut for the defense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now the other thing, the other guy from Plaque Mine who played here was Brian Mitchell. How much have you talked to him? And are are you guys actually related? Oh, uh, we we actually talked a lot. Like he he always tell me to reach out if I ever need anything, if everything, if anything go wrong. So like he always want to call away. And like I really well. I don't know if we can, but I think we is, though. Like, our city's small. I think he told me 15000 something like that. Really? Yeah. Well, you got, like, I mean, it's funny because you guys have a similar mindset, too. It, what did you notice in talking to him? What kind of advice has he given you? Uh, he just gave me, like, the advice. Just keep doing what you what you always been doing, going to work, and just stay, just stay grounded and humble. Most definitely. And, and and keep eating. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Would, how much did you know about him as a player growing up there? I know a lot about B. Mitch, for real. Like, so, like, everybody will be talking about him. Like, when I went to UL, they was all talking about him. Mm. And that's when I really started, like, doing my studies, you know, like, learning who he was and what he did. And I was like, oh, yeah, he the truth. He, he liked to talk a little bit, too. <laughs> Yeah. But the one thing he said, though, and this is something that feels like you have the same mindset when he got drafted, he was a fifth round pick. And he said that when he got drafted, he goes, a lot of people told him you made it. He goes, no, I haven't made it. I have to I has, now I have to go make it. You know what I mean? He didn't think that getting drafted just meant he made it. Is that kind of your mindset, too? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Like this. I just look at getting drafted. It's just like the start. You know, it's just like an invitation. So, like, I'm, I still got to show up to the party and produce. So that's how I feel. <laughs> there you go. Now, the other thing, when going back to the plaque mine stuff and whatever you – I remember seeing something how you had said something about your dad basically keeping you on that straight path, right? Um, yeah. What kind of things would he do with you? And I, I guess you're also close to your grandfather as well. So what kind of things would they do for you to kind of help you along the way? Uh, so, like, I feel like, like – when I just be doing like crazy stuff in the neighborhood or stuff like that, just doing stuff to get in trouble. Like my daddy, he always kept it real with me. So like he'll tell me like, nah, you can't be doing that. While other people just telling me it's okay, you just made a mistake. He gonna keep it real like, nah, no, don't do that again. Like, so like that really like helped me a lot. You know, just having somebody who really gonna keep it real with you in your corner. Like, and not gonna just say, this and that just to make you feel better. You know what I'm saying? He don't care if you hurt your feelings or how you feeling. If you mad at him for a whole month, he going to tell you what it is. 
Do you remember any time in particular that you can share? I don't really want to speak on it. Okay. I, I was, if, if you're getting in trouble for a month, it may be best not to share I don't, really want, I don't want to speak on it. But what about your grandfather, too? Because I understand you guys are pretty close. Oh, yeah. That's really, like, my grandpa, like, my best friend. So, like, if I get in trouble, like, I get shipped to his house. <laughs> so, like, his house was just quiet. And it was just chill. Like, you, ain't, I ain't have nobody who I knew. Like, so I wouldn't go in. I was so I'm sitting in the house out there. And I, I hate sitting in the house. Like, I'm an outside person. Like, I like the country. So I'm an outside person. So, like, they really used to be my point. But my grandpa, like, my best friend, like, we chop it up. Like, he just, that just, like, my right hand man, for real. Really? Like, do you, do you like to do things with them? Is there anything you guys like to talk about or uh, do? We be fishing a lot. Yeah, we, we used to go fishing a lot. He um just been slowing down, you know, getting older and stuff. So it been slowing him down. But our main thing was fishing. We'll go like to he'll take me to like certain spots, like old spots, like when he was a kid to eat oh. and stuff like that. Oh, get you get some fried catfish. Oh yeah, no definitely. Yeah, that's that's good stuff. Not not very healthy, but it's but it's good stuff. The other thing you like to do is breed dogs. What got you into that? Uh, I'm going to say what got me into breeding dogs. I'm going to say really just my love for animals. Like, I like all animals, but, like, dogs, like, they just, like, if you if you having a bad day, your dog going to cheer you up. Like, you can you can not feed your dog for months, and your dog still going to love you the same and still be happy with you. And I just, I like dogs for that not saying that I, I don't feed my dog but I know I, I, would, I didn't think you did but yeah I, I was gonna I was gonna make sure of that but I didn't I didn't think that was the case but yeah I got you I, I agree you could come home after a terrible day and your dog's gonna be wagging his tail so it's always right. kind of nice how so how long have you been doing this uh I really I really been breeding dogs since like when when growing up like me and my big cousin who I was telling you about he used to live in the trailer so we had like pit bulls wrapped all around the trailer at one point so like we had probably like 12 dogs over there like 12 pit bulls but then we switched it to the the big show dogs you know what i'm saying so now like we got all kind of dogs like that and that really like just it just kept going like our love for dogs and animals like it just kept going so we just if you can make us some money off something that you love to do like why not do it sure absolutely and so where are you where do you end up selling these dogs uh so like got a, we got an instagram um level up kennels and level like, up. yeah level up kennels and that like our instagram so basically like we just i just sold dogs all in memphis chicago like it got shippers who we uh ship the dog to on these people so like i got a couple dogs all over and what kind what kind of dogs do you specialize in uh specialized um xl bullies and english bulldogs Oh, the English Bulldogs. Oh, those yeah. Are cute, those are cute ones. Um, how long did it take you to become, like, is this an, was this an easy thing to start? Was it difficult? Oh, no. Nah, it wasn't easy because it most definitely cost some money. So yeah. it wasn't easy because, like, to get a good dog, you're going to spend 3000 and up. And right. I mean, at the time. so we was going half, but he was working. So he was putting in a little more. But now, like, I can hold my end a lot more more right now so like we just put together and we just be getting dogs like any way to better our kennel so it, it i'm gonna say it took about a year and a half because when we when we first started and we had bread like the puppies was so hard to sell oh really yeah that was that was like so hard to sell we ended Why? up keep we ended up keeping like three because like when you go from a different i feel like when you when you um put some money into something and then you go to a different like bracket with the money. Like you can't sell your dogs for a hundred dollars no more. Oh yeah. So like when the prices went up, like it slowed things down. But once people seen that we was producing quality dogs, right back up. There you go. That, that, which, which makes sense. So, and, and what, what do you have plans to do expand this or, or what do you, what do you hope to do with it? Uh, most definitely. Like I'm trying to hopefully like get a, a pet shop or uh, facility built just for uh breeding dogs and like set up like a probably like a rescue center just to, for like stray dogs just to have come over to the kennel and just keep you know 
I'll have people like come and bring their dogs over to us just to like like a hotel. Cool. So how important were these were dogs to you even just growing up? Like, does it, you know, did it, I don't know, did it, was it a nice, dis, I don't know, distraction or, or what did, what did they mean to you? Uh, so like, it just give you a thrill. Like when you can train a dog, you know what I'm saying? Like if you could just train a dog to be disciplined, like that just channel your mind to be more disciplined. Like just, just talking to your dog and getting them to learn different new things. You know what I'm saying? So like it was very important, you know, because like my love for animals, like I just spoke on, like I'd rather be around animals all day than people. You know what I'm saying? Really, <laughs> and which you know what, there are many days that I think a lot of people probably agree with you on that. You know, and you, how many dogs do you have just of your own? Uh, three? just of my own. Uh, three. Three. Okay, what kinds do you have? Uh, I have a Frenchie and an XL Bully. That's the ones that I that I keep in like my house. That's not at the kennel. Okay, and how big is the kennel? Uh, the kennel. Uh, I say we got a we got a we got a twelve yard fence built up, and we got a big big backyard for them. So like, we get, we got some in the indoor, some outside, depending on like the breed and how they are doing the heat and stuff like that. But we got mist fans on them and things like that. So it's it's pretty big. Uh, we probably got maybe twenty dogs right now in total. So you got football. You got this. I mean, what what else you got going on? You're 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 a young guy. You've got a lot going on for yourself. Uh, I don't really got and a new and a newborn. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. But I mean, when you've been when you've been doing it, I mean, it's like, and you know, like you got like like my partner, my my cousin, like. I know I could depend on him to hold it down while I'm gone. So like when you got somebody in your corner like that, I mean, he just make it easier for me. Like, and his love for dogs. I mean, when you both, when you got two people who really love something and trying to accomplish the same goal, I mean, things will go by smooth. Yeah. Now you, now you're surrounded by a bunch of guys who have a lot of money who could afford to buy maybe some of those dogs. <laughs> Make a right. couple big hits on special teams. You never know what it leads to, right? Right. <laughs> so last thing then for you for rookie year, looking, I know we're still a ways away from even training camp, but what did, what do you hope to accomplish this year with this team? Uh, the main thing I'm trying to accomplish is to get on the field and help my team win games and be the best teammate as I can be. That's really like what my mind focuses on and learning the playbook. Like, Learning the playbook is my main focus right now and and getting on the field to help my team win. And then early impressions of the talent that's around you on that defense. What you say? What your early impressions of the talent around you on defense? Uh I'm most definitely like impressed, like in like the different things that the guys do and like how they do them. Like they ain't just like know anybody like they they really elite out there but i mean the world gonna see there you go percy i appreciate your time man thanks a lot enjoyed it thank you this pride everyone's coming through for the trevor project on youtube shorts join us create a short showing how you're stepping up for pride using the hashtag youtube pride challenge come through for pride on youtube shorts visit youtube.com backslash pride it's so nice out there out there in the Mexican markets where chili stretch in the sun, high in the mountain air between backcountry skis and kids doing the first snowplow, or next to the pool after a long day of forgetting what day it is. We're all here to get out there and come home more us than the us that went away. And when you save on travel as an Expedia member, you can travel even more. It's so nice out there. So let's go. Expedia. Made to travel. Terms apply. See site for details. That's it for this episode. Thanks to Percy for joining me and thank you as always for listening. I'll be back with another episode on Tuesday after the first day of Washington's mandatory minicamp. I'll talk to you next time.